needed some good hits. I don't care if you use a hammer, a knife, uh, that can opener. Sorry, you gotta wash your hands. It's really quick. Thank you, Do you need some help? We actually have a lot of help now. Oh, okay. Well, now we're cool. Okay. But, uh, And if you're like, well, how do you know which, you know, shape to cut the food in? You know, let's be real. I mean, I'm probably making pasta. <laughs> so we're going to cut the pasta in the pasta shapes. Uh, you know, the cilantro for sure can be chopped. Uh, the cherry tomatoes can be chopped in, you know, small halves or quarters or something. You know, all of that can be um, done. The, all the bottles can be opened. You know, the nuts, depending on what you're going to make, can be crunched down. Um, bell peppers can be sliced, because even if, you know, you might waste a little time if you're actually then go blend them in something. But, you know, you probably blend them, unless you know you're going to blend them, you probably won't. So at least they're sliced, boom. You know, the, the avocados are taken out. Now we might use whole pieces of avocados. So all I have them do is just take them out of the uh, skin in the whole pieces still. Mm. Definitely, they were like, should we mash them? I'm like, no, we don't need to mash them. You know, we might mash them, but I don't know yet. What are these? Uh, so you see, they're kids. Boy, nuts. Get all the nuts together. Oh, man. Just make these. <laughs> uh, if you want to, there's some knives over there. And you can slice these into skinny spears, like long spears, okay? Just kind of meditate. See them out, like, 20 minutes. All right. Okay. But, no, let's turn the dinner Oh, great. Yeah. This is the best one. Oh, no. I think you have to find the knife with the, uh, you have to find the knife with the, uh, the serrated edge. You have to. Someone has to train with this knife. Which one to do? I think that could be that here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Okay. So Good job. Okay. So let's just put them in a little, uh, container bowl.
already dropped this. And I suggest you use different uh, hands. Guys, you can't be using both of them. But just be really careful because when I learn charge, this is hard to cut. Basically, you just need a little paper thin.
then this has to be kind of somewhat similar as the lemongrass. It must be chopped very fine first, a little size like this. So then when you go back for it, you know, you can chop it again, like really small. But the first time, it has to be chopped kind of like this because um, it'll just help it chop it. Then you, and then you type a little bit of this stuff on that too. Get that that that's the biggest thing. Yeah, no. Yes. 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 Yes.
on the movie sets, cell phones and pages. Sitting straight? Good. 
Remember, you cross your legs and the hair is being screwed up. You put your butt all the way in the back of the chair. It works. The force is such a Or you put your butt all the way at the front of the chair and then just lean your elbows on the table when you have a table in front of you. This also keeps you very um, sitting straight. So um, let us see where are we at here. So breathing through your nose, another very important technique. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. When you go get your car fixed, do you listen to him or do you tell him what to do? Listen. Right. And why? Because he knows more about my car than I do. There you go. He is an expert. All right. He is a professional. That is the word I like. Professional. <laughs> she is not a professional. So. Therefore, she must do a lot of research and studying to become a professional in car repair. The same thing applies to breath. These people, yogis, oh, yogi, they are breath experts. So listen to them or go do a bunch of research and investigative work and you will find that they're right. But you must understand that they are experts. So if you don't go do all that research, just go ask them. And it's important to think higher thoughts because, you know, it goes high. Holding everything up high is a great way to live, too, because you're holding everything tight and in and sucking energy out of the ground, up your spine. And right there, your spine does a funny thing. What does it do? It curves in right through the center of your brain. <coughs> So, breathing through your nose and holding everything up. The arm only knows one thing. Toes pointed forward. Stomach in, chest out, chin up. Okay. Other than that, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> they know that for sure. So, try and stand this way. You can stand belly style too if you want. This way or this way. Just don't stand this way. <coughs> You know, this is very lazy behavior and very, uh, you're not working your muscles. You're actually straining your muscles because you're not working them evenly. And most people build a habit of just putting all the weight on one foot. It's okay if you switch, but if you're going to have one foot weight on one foot for your whole life, it's going to dis, uh, what is it, disalign your hips. It will disalign your hips. Thank you. Yeah, that we can put on you. Is that all of the bread? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe there's another second. Great. Thank you guys. Let's turn up slow so you guys don't miss too much. <laughs> Pop that door open if you want to. Okay. So uh, so sitting, standing, breathing, eating, drinking. What I call them is first base. We're not talking about getting to kiss a girl. We're talking about first base as in this is what we should have learned early on. I mean, someone, somewhere, some educational system forgot to think that this was important, and they skipped it. But you employ this in your life now. Employ, employ it in your life now. Please, do this for yourself. You will notice a dramatic difference just like that. You know? um, let's see. So, if you think I know what I'm making out of all of this food, you're crazy. But what I can tell you is I know exactly what I have left. Like, I know my onions can be diced, okay? I know my zucchini can be turned into pasta. Um, my spinach can be washed and, you know, the bottom like part that it goes off of clean. My herbs de-stemmed. My peppers chopped in a few different uh, shapes and sizes. Um, my cilantro, look at how we do cilantro. We don't cut cilantro here. We, sorry, pardon me. Okay, there we go. We, what we do with cilantro is we pick each leaf off. You think it takes a long time? Just have a dinner party and just someone, you know, just go, hey, can you hook up the cilantro? <laughs> and they'll do it, you know. So it's really nice when you're actually in this environment because you get all these roots and herbs so nicely chopped and done for you. Um, this is lemongrass. Lemongrass, we love Thai food in the raw food world. Thai food is it. So lemongrass and uh, lime leaf. I think we need to turn the mic down just a tiny. Hello? Okay, I think we're done. Maybe. Um, 
So lemongrass and cape ear lime. I hope everyone knows what a cape ear lime leaf is. We got them at Whole Foods the other day. If you don't know what they are, go buy a package and chop them up and you will see what a cape ear lime leaf is. It is the essence of Thai food and it is delicious. Lemongrass, amazing. Um, do you know why my food is better than anybody else's? Uh, because when we make, say, Italian food, we're going to use some basil, sure, just like other restaurants, and maybe some parsley, just like other restaurants, but we're also going to come in there with the and use some tarragon and rosemary and oregano on top of it. Think when you're using all of those herbs and spices, how much better food will be. When I make Thai food, lime juice, mint, cilantro, basil, and definitely some cape ear lime, lemongrass, and another Thai ginger called galanga. You can find it very good. Um, so use the nationality and just copy it, just because that will make your food better. Mexico, uh, cumin, lime, hot pepper, cilantro, you know, just kind of go to that nationality, see what they offer, and use all of them. So there will be an abundance of flavor throughout the entree's uh, consumption. I mean, just, you'll be like, whoa, I've never tasted such powerful food. <laughs> I get that all the time. Um, let me see that. Vanilla extract, even though it's cooked, it is okay. All right, it is okay. We are just going to use a little bit. Okay, we're not going to sit there and drink a bowl of vanilla extract. So as long as you're using a little bit of the spice, it's okay. Like we plate tamari. It's also a little cooked, you know, but it's okay. We're going to use a little bit. We definitely don't want to eat like a bowl of cooked food like this. But, you know, a little bit of that stuff is fine. Um, let's see what we got going on. Oh, someone asked me about peeling the ginger. I definitely recommend peeling the ginger. Yeah, that's peeling the ginger in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you don't have to peel ginger. Ginger, I don't know why people think you have to peel the skin. We use it all the time. We just chop it up. I've never noticed it, okay? Um, garlic is a good one. Garlic must be also uh, not only um, peeled, but decentered as well, okay? So you take out that little center in the garlic. If you do that, um, the garlic breath and the heartburn usually goes away, and the people who are intolerant to garlic it usually goes away pretty well. Um, let's see. What else do we got here? We got a little party platter, first of all. Um, let's see, what else are major things we need to talk about? Oh, soaky nuts. <coughs> Everybody always asks me about soaky nuts. And I'm like, uh, well, I don't, I mean, for my opinion, it's all about taste. You know, that's why we're here is taste. And if it means that the texture of the nut is not going to be what I want, but it's soaked, don't soak. <laughs> Just don't soak it. But um, remember, nuts are like this. Nuts come out white and tasty if you soak them. And if you don't soak them, oily kind of, you know, kind of oily texture, like pesto. So, as far, and then, sorry, one more thing on soaking nuts. Um, I make like sour cream or something, let's say, and I make that nuts. I mean, isn't it kind of soaking? I mean, it's soaking. It's in little pieces and it's soaking, you know? So, I mean, they're soaked. <laughs> so, and if the worst thing you're doing is eating a soaked nut, I think you're doing okay. So, pretty, you're doing 99% better than anyone else. Okay. So, uh, definitely soak nuts and seeds if it is conducive to your texture requirements. If not, don't worry about that. Remember, there's also another way you can do. You can soak nuts, you can not soak nuts, and then you can soak nuts and then re-dehydrate them, which is also a cool way of doing it because then you got the crunch, but it's different. They're still different. They're never that oily kind of texture again, ever, in my opinion. So, yeah, which is not too big of a deal. Um, things with another, one more quick thing on soaking nuts because this is like a food class. See how um, these, uh, off Walnuts or almonds or pecan, um, pecans or almonds? Or walnuts, sorry. Whatever these are, walnuts. And pine nuts? These have no skin, whereas walnuts, Brazil nuts, almonds have a skin. Macadamia nuts have no skin. So if it doesn't have a skin, you don't really have to soak it. But if it has a skin, you do soak it. But this is going to be a thorough nut. And after this, I want to test. So after this, uh, 
You don't really have to soak them, okay? Um, the non-skin nuts, the ones with skins are a little better to soak if they're conducive to your texture. And another thing, never soak pecans because they take the flavor away right away. So, and pecans have a great flavor, but if you soak them, even if you re-dry them again, the flavor is just kind of gone. So, okay, that's nuts. <laughs> We're through with it, but the nuts are a big deal. Okay, here, one more thing on nuts. <laughs> if you have, uh, if you have, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, kind of like a little hard on your system as far as nuts go, you have nothing to worry about. That will go away. If you think raw food is hard on your system, that will go away. It is just getting everything loosened up. So people are like, eat raw food, and they're like, Oh, <laughs> trust me, you know, uh, mint did not mess you up, okay? <laughs> if mint is causing you a problem and like cilantro and some nuts, you know, don't think that, you guys, it is not true. I've seen people be raw for a year or two and then they have some freak out problem of some type or other and they say, Man, that raw food just messing me up. I think I need some cooked food. You know, I think I gotta eat cooked food. Uh, Miss Brigitte Mars will tell you what happened when her little daughter ate some uh, cooked food or fish or something when she thought she needed some cooked food. She got really, really sick. You know, really, really sick. So when you um, when you feel this detoxification occur, just remember that you are poisoning your body for many years. You have stuff stuff in there. It's like a car that, um, I like to use cars because cars are just so poster. It's like a car, you stuff it full of stuff and then you kind of get in it and you're like, oh, it's uncomfortable in here, man. I'm like, of course it is, you know? You're putting something, living in a really toxic, filled environment. So definitely uh, don't believe in, don't buy into that whole, oh man, it's, I've been raw for three months, I'm totally sick now, something happened, I think I need some cooked food. Because that is not true. That is the poison is coming out of you. It's deeply embedded in us, and it must come out, and it's not always the greatest time. Okay? I mean, it'll be anything. It could be anything. It could be intense tiredness, uh, intense rashes, uh, you know, uh, anything. It could be any cleansing reaction you can think of can occur from, you know, stopping eating poison. Um, let me see. Uh, I think we need to, I was just going to bring something up. Oh, yeah. Uh, and by the way, if anybody has a question anywhere around here, please just keep your sitting up. Okay. If you have any questions, so <laughs> any questions, please stop. Um, is everyone still sitting straight? You remember posture? 21 <coughs> days, three weeks, you guys. You will not be hunched over for when you're in your old age. In three weeks, if you can just be, remember to stand a little too perfect, actually. Because you know in a couple minutes you're going to be like... <laughs> so just go a little over. Believe me, you need it. You've been like this for so long, you might as well get some of this. So uh, try to, you know, get that in there. What is for breakfast? Uh, breakfast can be anything. Breakfast is a great item to choose from. I mean, what isn't breakfast? The other day I had a cheeseburger and french fries for breakfast. Yes, it was a raw cheeseburger and french fries. Way better than any cooked cheeseburger and french fries I can ever hope to ever be. Plus, after I ate it, I was like, let's go for a run. And go, right on. Instead of, you know, why did I do that? So, remember that, why did I, I talked about this a little bit last night. Sorry if you were here last night, you have to endure a few things again. But, uh, that why did I do that? That's what everyone feels after you eat every meal. Tell me if I'm wrong. Go ahead, interrupt me. Say, no, no, no. Unless salad and fruit, okay? But after every meal, you feel like, why did I do that? You know, I, I'm so dumb. I, I don't want to do that anymore, you know? You're, but you have no choice. You know, you're like, uh, no choices exist. Well, I'm sorry. You cannot count on the outside world to provide you with something real in your diet. So you must do it for yourself, and that means having you know, something in, prepared in your lunch, you know, something, uh, something to that effect. You must, here, roll something up in some of this. You'll be so happy. You'll be very, very happy. Um, definitely don't, uh, 
don't have just a, the attitude that, oh, I'll find something. Because you're not going to find anything except for a salad that isn't even that great. It's chopped on the same cutting boards as all the meat and cheese and chicken. It's uh, just really not a good idea to have um, food from the outside world, unless it's a raw food restaurant. And you're going to say, oh, I have to pack every meal, believe me. After three weeks, you guys quit. Don't be raw. Juliana, you know. <laughs> like whatever but try it for three weeks try it you can go back okay but you must try it do you know how you get old in life by doing the same old thing okay that's how you get old if you become a pianist at 90 you'll get younger but you, even if you're not raw I bet you do you know, but if you're raw boy you'll be really you know, serious so uh, remember do something new, explore new things in your life. Really go for it, you know, live your life. Laziness is great and easy, but just force yourself to get up, you know, just like get up and go do it. Uh, just do it is the best logo in the world, Nike's logo, just do it. You know, just don't even think about, it. even if you're tired, you should see me go to yoga sometime, but like, hi, I'm seven, I'm here. <laughs> And then sometimes I just fall asleep through the whole class. I don't care. Hey, I went. You know, and then I feel bad because I slept. And I'm like, I'm so stupid for sleeping through the whole class. I'm never doing that again. And then I go, and then I don't, and then I feel great. So just do it. So yoga, raw food, something new in your life. Those three things take with you out of here. Remember, for three weeks, this will be a hard road to take. You will be going, what is this crazy stuff? You know, I mean, who ever heard of, like, you're going to see me on this blender, you're going to be like, yeah, right. You know, it's so nice to do this blender cheese. It's loud, and it's, like, kind of hard. But can you get it down? You'll be so happy that, you know, uh, Mr. Yeah. Hi, Sarah, how are you? Guess what I made? I made some nut cheese, some pistachio cheese, some Brazil nut cheese, some white cheese. Here, try this. And your friends are going, oh, my God, this is amazing. What? This is great. Hey, I got some free tickets. Come by, you know. It's cool, you know, and then they'll hook you back up, you know. And then boom, you have spread raw foods and you have what I call a, a facet of raw foods, a very important one, no problem karma. It's very important to have no problem karma. Because, you know, I mean, hey, if you're polluting this planet all day long, you know, with eating cooked food that comes in a package with the label, think about this, tree had to get cut down, okay. Uh, is it possible to get some water, maybe some of the water? Thank you. Um, yeah, can you bring up anything you got out here? Thank you. Um, so if you have to go through this and everything that you buy comes in a package, like most American food does, and uh, <laughs> remember to always structure your water. That means putting a little bit of a... Anything alive can structure your water. Water has a memory in it, and if you re reactivate that memory, when water sits stagnant, it putrefies. So it's stagnant, it stagnates and putrefies. So if you can um, put a little salt or lemon in it, it structures your water. Thank you. And by the way, everybody, I just want you to meet Arielle Michaels. She has been raw. She has raised raw and vegan since birth. She's like, where am I going? Uh, raw and vegan since birth. Has never had an immunization. Has never had a... Uh, never has gone to a doctor or dentist in her entire life. Except she did chip her tooth and she went for cosmetic. Okay? But she has never gone to a doctor or dentist. She does not believe in cavities or doctors or dentists. They don't exist. Um, never an injection or a needle of any kind, immunizations, no. She was born under a living room floor. Her parents were like hippies, you know. They're all raw, conceived raw. I mean, she looks okay to me. She has, she has five brothers and sisters. They all look fine, you know. I mean, they're okay. See, it works. <laughs> it says, and people, thank you, and people always say, uh, I know you guys heard this, sorry, um, people always say, uh, you know, are you sure no immunizations are? I'm going to Africa. Well, 
that becomes like this path, the distinction. Where are you? Are you cooked or are you raw? Because if you're cooked, man, I forgot to pray for it. <laughs> if you're cooked, yeah, you kind of need immunizations before you go to Africa. But if you're raw, you really don't need immunizations before you go to Africa or somewhere else. This is the deal, you guys. Choose your road. I mean, what world do you want to be part of? The medical world? Or, or the raw, living, organic, vegan, vegetables, Mother Nature you know, world. You know, that is the world, you guys. That is the choice we make. And this choice is really... Do you have something to say to me? share with us? If that choice is really important in your life, you must make this choice because this decides whether you will wind up on an operating table. I don't have... <laughs> you don't feel good? Come here. I'll take care of you. I got just what you need and give me all your money. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> okay. So, you guys, that's the deal. You know, they're waiting. Watch out. They're ready. You go, oh, we'll just cut it off. It's okay. It's like, we'll put it in the pig heart. No problem. It's like, woo, watch out. So, those guys, all they offer is needles, knives, drugs, big bills, and medica um, medication. Yeah, medication. That's it. What else do they hold in their hand? Nothing. All of that has been proven to be bad. Okay, all of it. Everyone, is. if you go to the doctor, I'm sure he will find something wrong with you. Okay, I'm positive. Like he'll be like, oh, we gotta cut that out. But if you just go to nature. You will be fine. You get to eat your medicine. You're just like, I'm happy. And remember, the pharmacy, before it was called the pharmacy, it was the farm I see. The farm, I see. So, <laughs> pharmaceuticals, okay? Farm, pharmaceuticals. It used to come from the farm, but then they're like, hey, let's cook it, turn it white, and sell it anyways. <laughs> it's like, even though it's bad for you, I mean, this is the only place in the world where you can be like, Hey, I invented this thing. It causes cancer. Let's market it to the whole country. We'll be rich. And it really works. It's like, oh man, can't believe it. So, children, watch out. A lot of bad stuff in candy. Don't stay away from candy. There's plenty of candy in Wild Oats and Whole Foods. Plenty of candy. They have dried mango, dried fruits, all that stuff. It's very good. You can chew on gum and you can even swallow it. You know, it's mango flavored gum. Yum. So, have that stuff. Stay away from the poisons in life. Like five, six things come in a package. Oil, namashoyu, show you, which is supposed to be soy sauce, but namashoyu show you soy sauce. Oil, namashoyu, show you. Uh, apple cider vinegar, curry, nori, uh, and uh, honey, olives. Apple cider vinegar. Yeah, apple cider vinegar. So about like six things. Yeah, like six, seven things. Not too many. Too much, most stuff should be like this. Sarah, what is it? It's a raw lemon organic. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right, it's a lemon. How do you know? There's no label or package. Label and package built into the design. See, it's real. That's why you know what it is. Like, look, like, uh, red bell pepper. It's even got, <laughs> you still know it's a red bell pepper, see? Because it's real, you know? Basil, ginger. Cucumber, you get it? It's real. It needs no package or label. Meanwhile, this has a package and label. And this is a tree right here, okay? Processed into a glossy label with a bunch of ink made in another factory. Do you know people went to school their whole lives just to learn how to make the machines which spray the ink on this package? Engineer the machines? I mean, that's a lot of time and effort going, driving to school every day to learn how to poison the planet further. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, you picked the wrong crib. Okay, so, <laughs> wrong crib. So, uh, make sure you remember not to do this, okay? This stuff, most, this isn't, this is raw, but um, stuff that comes in a package is usually cooked four times in different factories, 
before they send it to another, before you bring it home and cook it again. This is a, uh, this is just like some, uh, I mean, this is just the labels and the, and the container, the package itself. 85% of all landfill waste is labels. I'm in trouble. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, I said the wrong thing. Uh, try to keep it mellow, we're in the library. <laughs> <laughs> like our graded PG-13 behavior. So, uh, so labels and packages um, are really 85% of the landfill. And think about what I throw away mostly. Go look at the trash right now. You can go right in that kitchen, go look at the trash. It's like filled in here with stems and peels and seeds. And it has a few pieces of plastic here and there. You know, but stems, peels, and seeds. Um, we're growing trees. I said yesterday, I just blurted it out, but it's actually a funny line. I think I'll incorporate it in my you know, deal. Uh, the only diet where you go to the bathroom in the forest and strawberries grow. <laughs> How can you go wrong? You're like, well, hey, strawberry, that's pretty good. You can't do that. <laughs> so it's the right way of going, okay? Um, just remember, if you put anything I make today in the ground, a tree will grow. And that tree gives us what? Food. Oxygen. Oxygen. Very important. Uh, water. Because you look, lots of water in these, lots of water in these. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Good job. Uh, lots of water in these. So, it gives us food, oxygen, and water. It also gives us, if you cut down a tree, shelter. And if you burn it, warmth and light. And guess what? There's a lot of healing medicinal properties in trees, too. So cures for inconveniences. So the seven essentials of human existence, food, water, shelter, oxygen, warmth, light, and cures for diseases. Seven essentials of human existence. What else do you need? A tree. But cooked food, if you put it in the ground, and you come back in three days, no, there will be no beginnings of trees. There will be, however, mold and maggots. Mold and maggots. Mold in the body is cancer, maggots are parasites. Mold and maggots, okay? So, quite a difference. You know, you're talking about the seven essentials of human existence or mold and maggots. Um, this is a much better alternative than this. This is a package, a label, and plastic residues which leach into your water and sterilize all of us. Okay, they're gonna tell you in five years not to drink out of this anymore. This, on the other hand, I didn't know we had any tea earlier. This, on the other hand, is a great glass of water. Okay, just take a little bite. No, hmm. so much better than this. Uh, cucumbers are great glasses of water. Look, they travel easy. You can just put it in your bag, you know, and be like, hi. Oh. Everybody else put it on water, you're like, <laughs> great. Great. Okay. Um, available year round. This is actually a melon. Did you know that? These are actually melons. These are melon melons. So, like 95% water. Okay, as soon as you chew it, even the skin kind of like just turns into water. You know, Water that is heavy water, as we call it. Totally metabolable by the body. The body doesn't have to go, oh, I got some liquid, but boy, it's really dirty and plasticky. You have to deal with this, you know. No, it's perfect water. What we call perfect water or heavy water. So, uh, rainwater out in the middle of no place is also perfect water. Um, always, if you're gonna collect rainwater, they'll let it rain for an hour or two first, really hard, and then put a couple bowls out, because that way, the sky is clean for sure. Um, so you see, there is an alternative to everything. There is an alternative to this. Find a way of it. All right. So there is an alternative to everything, you guys. Don't think it's going to be hard. You aren't going to get anything. You know, oh man, I got to give up food. You know, it's going to be so hard. It's inconvenient. Nothing is harder or more inconvenient than laying down on the table with. They got okay? <laughs> way harder, way more inconvenient, all right? Way, you know. Is anyone sick, by the way? Does anyone not feel good? Everyone's fine? So just see me if you're sick or don't feel good, I will help you out right away. Okay, so um, stick with uh, 
Thanks. You know, nature has never let us down. I mean, we've been here, I don't know, I don't care if you, do you believe in God or do you believe in evolution? Who cares? Because if you believe in God, we started in the Garden of Eden, and if you believe in evolution, we started as monkeys, so we still ate garden. <laughs> we're still in the garden. Either way, we're in the garden, okay? Doesn't matter what you believe, who cares? We're in the garden, all right? Um, what's my funny, Je oh yeah, I got a funny Jesus thing too. Uh, I told this lady, I go, what's the most important thing in the world? And she goes, Jesus. I'm like, okay, what else? She goes, my children and my loved ones. And I go, okay, I bet I can make you think Jesus and your loved ones come a second to something else. And she's like, more important than my children and God? I don't know, what? And I go, air. Okay, air is much more important. And she said, oh, that doesn't matter. Jesus will save me anyways. And uh, my response was, you need a location. I am sorry to sin in. Because if you do not sin, Jesus can't save you. And you need a place to sin, and that's here. And you need air to be here. So, air. <laughs> All right, I guess it is air. <laughs> so, you need air and a place to live and a location. You guys, we can't drink the water. Something's wrong, okay? No one seems to be thinking it's a problem. Like, let's go kill the Arabs if you're a guy. And if you're a girl, let's go kill the insects. You know, right on. Arabs and insects, get rid of them, okay? But don't worry about the corporations who are truly our enemies. Truly our enemies are the corporations who are poisoning our children for profit. You know, you look up the ingredients in children's candy and cereals, and then you, and foods for that matter, and you look up the ingredients on the FDA's list. It's not my list or some crazy raw food hippie, weirdo, shaman, whatever. No, the FDA's list, and you'll see that those same ingredients are listed as a carcinogen. Why is this happening? How can we allow people to feed our children carcinogens? I mean, that is crazy. So, uh, my guy can't sell wild mushrooms at the store anymore, at the farmer's market, because it's suddenly illegal. The health department said, no, no more wild mushrooms. It's not from an approved food source. He says, my great-grandfather used to come to this farmer's market and sell mushrooms when it was like six people and you didn't even need a permit. You know, you just came, you know. Now we, you guys said, okay, permits, okay, we dealt with that. Now it's like, oh, now you can't even do that. Wild mushrooms you cannot sell anymore in, San, in L.A., but you can still sell cigarettes and guns. But just no wild mushrooms. Okay. Watch out for those wild mushrooms. Cigarettes, guns, no problem. So, you know, kind of crazy. Okay. Um, the other story of the health inspector really quick is I had this little tiny dog, oh, about to die. You know, old dog. Like, when the door should, like, say, the door was right here. And the lady had it on a leash, on a leash. And she was sitting right by the door, and the dog was half in and half out <coughs> over the barrier. And it was sleeping. And it, it wasn't doing anything, it was just, you know, like this. And the health inspector goes, Giuliano, you know I could have you closed, you're lucky I like you, but I could have you closed down right now for having animals on premises. I go, but Margaret, there's animals on all the premises of all the restaurants. Oh, that's right, they're dead. I forgot. <laughs> if they're dead, they can, be on the, they can be on the counters, in the refrigerator, on the plates. But if they're alive, they can't even be sleeping halfway. You know, we can close you down. If I'm like, are you crazy, Margaret? Like, are you serious? You mean I, you could actually walk in and I could, like, stick a knife in something, blood could splatter out, and you'd be like, Right on, good job. But a sleeping dog, I could quote, this is very serious. Yeah. Are you crazy? So they are crazy. Yeah. Um, back to corporations. Uh, so, air is number one on the list. Air. Number two on the list, I'd say, is sunlight. Sunlight is number two. Well, they're attacking our air, obviously. We have more cars. You know, by the way, uh, what is that called? Population control? Is that what it's called? When you try to limit people having babies? Okay, so we have population control around the world, but there's no really control on how many cars we make. It's cool. There's just a population control. <laughs> Don't make too many people. The cars are okay, but watch out for those people. So, like, we gotta get rid of the people. The 
cars are fun. So I walk down the street, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of cars. I don't see that many people, but I see a lot of cars, man. I mean, I think we have a problem with cars now. People are way bigger, and they're, you know, way polluting. So, so air is number one. And they are doing a good job at getting rid of that, just like the water. Pretty soon you're going to be like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Put it in a new <laughs> like, so that's going to suck when we get to that. Think about it. So they're cutting down the rainforest. The Earth's uh, air filter is the rainforest, and they're cutting it down so we can have grazelands for cheeseburgers. I swear it for cows. Swear to God, that's why they're cutting down the rainforest. For room to breed cows and graze cows, because Cows can be trucked over the border. Trucking is cheap. Shipping is expensive. So they're going to truck the cows over the border. And they're going to, uh, uh, let me see, truck them over the border. And it's cheap to do it that way. But in order to, um, to you know, in order to ship them or something, they come from far away. So they're just like, where do we have this much room? The rainforest. Perfect grass source. You know, perfect. Cut it down. Plus, we can sell the lumber. Great. So, air, sunlight. How are they doing on the sunlight? Well, uh, the atmosphere, the ozone. Okay, so, so far our water is totally not under attack. It has been beaten, okay? The war on water is over. They won. They won for sure. Okay, so the water, out of it. The air, they're working on it. The ozone, they are also working on it. What else is super important in life that we can't live without, that we cannot exist without? Hmm. Air, uh, the food, obviously, that's why you're here, the food. So there's four big ones. What else is there? Um, the largest producer of weapons we build more guns and weapons than any other country in the world. And this is a fact that most people don't know. We sell more guns and weapons than any other country in the world. And we test more guns and weapons than any other country in the world. So we are uh, the largest producers and sellers. So what did that tell you? And our number two business in America, number two most dollars and cents business in America, Drugs, pharmaceuticals, and uh, the doctors. So, we are gun running drug addicts. Call us Scarface, okay? Because that's what we are. We are Scarface. And we are Tony Montana America. So, just remember this, you guys. This is how we can really measure ourselves. What's number three? Organized religion. <coughs> What's number four? Prisons. You know, it's like, after a while, you're like going, is there anything good on the list? <laughs> No, anything? No, there isn't. Sorry. <laughs> there is not. There's nothing good on that list. So, you have uh, you have um, air, food, water, our immune systems, our atmosphere, our planet, and something else very important. On more and more labels, it says learning disabilities, birth defects, and mortality. All a nice way, not too nice even, a way, how nice can you say, we're also killing the young before they're even born. You know, these are billion dollar companies which have this on their label. Billion dollar companies. So we do not need their, their, those corporations destroying our world and having us fighting insects and arrows when they are really, truly destroying our world, okay, totally, in every way. Just remember, you guys, we have this planet and no other. It's alive. It's blue. It's a living, breathing entity, and, you know, we need to respect our and love it and watch out for it and only us can do it. All right, so some really quick uh, ammunition. Some people say, you're raw? What are you doing being raw? You know, are you crazy? You, know, you can actually reply intelligently, effectively. And this is a really great ammunition. Um, so plants, animals, and insects have no doctors or dentists. 
They don't even have the word in their vocabulary. They have no word as vocabulary, uh, uh, what do you call it, a cavity. They have no word in their vocabulary for sickness and disease. They don't have that. They are not feeling great. They are feeling perfect, okay? Big difference between I feel great and I feel perfect. Big difference. So, um, you have to think that animals, plants, insects, okay? They are all doing amazing. They have no doctors and dentists. They live in a harsh environment. They are supposedly much less intelligent. We are supreme intelligence. We live in a very controlled environment. And we have millions of doctors and dentists. And we are all sick and out of shape. And when we die, we have spoiled teeth at very best. So what does that tell you? They have no doctors and dentists. We have millions. They're great, worse, rude. I mean, what's like, uh, what can we equate that to? What's a major difference between us? Well, raw food, um, that's one. They only eat raw food. Everything on the planet eats raw food. Every plant, animal, and insect eats raw food. There's no such thing as cooked food. Think about these doctors. Oh, you need an immunization before you go to Africa. Needles weren't even here 70 or 80 years ago. They weren't even here. What did we do before that? We looks like we made it. All you need is those seven things. Air, sunlight, immune system, oxygen, uh, atmosphere, you know, uh, that's all we need to make sure our species lives on. So there's my uh, my deal. <laughs> if there's any questions, fire away. I'll take whatever. We'll do like uh, maybe just like ten minutes of questions, and then we'll just get right into food real quick. I promise. Okay. Any questions at all? Come on. No one has any questions. Okay. Back there in the back row. You love what? Can you eat beets and squash raw? Absolutely. The only thing you can eat raw is an artichoke, and you can still eat an artichoke raw if you use the heart and you marinate it. So beets and squash are delicious raw. We do so much with squash, it's amazing. We make pumpkin pies, we make uh, salmon out of our squash. We use squash wherever you can use carrots. We make squash juice, squash soups, pumpkin is a squash, by the way. So squash is a great replacement for carrots, okay? Um, remember, and beets, beets are kind of sugary, so maybe cut down on beets a little bit, but they're, they're not the worst, but they're not the greatest. Remember, the, if you want to write this list down, this is a good list. Um, it's on my website, too, just planetraw.com. Uh, and paynoincometax.com is another great website. Great website, okay? Paynoincometax.com, uh, nontoxicpaint.com. Be responsible. Are you gonna re? Are you gonna buy a new piece of furniture? Make sure it's a it's a good piece of marble or wood or stainless steel. Don't buy some Formica deal that has a toxic varnish. All this deal going on. Are you gonna paint your house? Paint it with clay paint. Nontoxicpaint.com. Go choose which one you want. They're delicious. Imagine how nice it is when you walk walk in the room and you're like, it smells like clay. Not whoa. You know, it's like, it smells like clay. It's amazing. So, um, yeah, uh, the bananas, dates, carrots, beets, uh, corn, grains. Uh, buckwheat is not a grain, it is fruit. Uh, let me see, grains. Uh, seedless fruit, no good. Uh, let me see, all that stuff. It's on my website. Go to the website and check for those. They're, it's amazing. Once you give up those, I know they're raw, organic, and vegan. They're still not great. There's replacements. Instead of figs, I mean, instead of uh, dates, figs and honey. Amazing. Prunes. Amazing. You know, but not dates. Just think of it this way. It's really easy. Those are all the starchy kind of things, like the grains, the beans, the potatoes. Those are all starches. And those starches are not good to eat on a regular basis or ever if you can help it because they're very starchy and they have, like, they have a, a very concentrated sugar in it, which goes in your pancreas and causes a lot of problems. We'll just leave it at that. I have a better explanation on the way. Um, OK, any other questions? Let's talk more. Yes? For what? A cat's diet? A cat's diet? Pets. Oh, pets. Exactly what you eat, they should eat. 
They are a member of the family. They have a job. They protect the home or they give you love, whatever. They should do the exact same thing you should do. They should be included on whatever you eat. They should get. And trust me, you think your kids and pets won't eat raw food? Just don't feed them for three days. <laughs> After three days, they will eat anything you put in. Put a shoe in front of them and where's some salt? I mean, for sure. And who doesn't need to fast? Don't worry about it. Pregnant women, fast for a day. It's okay. It's cool. You're not going to have, your, diet, your baby isn't going to have a protein deficiency because you fasted for a day. You're actually building into his genetic code fasting, which is a great thing to do for your child. Okay? Um, anything else? Yes? It, it doesn't really matter what disease, you guys. It, it, disease, you know, that doesn't even really exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no such thing as cancer, diabetes, AIDS. All of that is a farce, you guys. It is not real. It is your body. Do you know what disease is? It is a failure of the immune system. But it's actually, there's even a better definition. Disease, look it up in the dictionary, it means inconvenience. The first definition is inconvenience. Disease is your body's way of communicating to you. This ease, or it speaks another language, not Spanish, feeling great, okay? So, feeling great, or this ease, discomfort. That's the two languages it speaks to you, trying to tell you you're doing something wrong. And it will keep speaking to you until you change your behavior, until you die, you know, until you're so diseased, you die. You have so much this ease, you die. Or, you cannot believe in disease because I don't. There's no way cancer can, I can get killed in a car crash, but I cannot die of cancer because I don't eat cancer. I don't eat cancer. How can you have cancer? Is cancer a missing pill? Is cancer a cure that yet to be discovered? Is that why you have cancer? Is that why you have cancer? Because you're not taking a pill or, you have a, or you're waiting for a cure to be discovered? No, you have cancer because you ate it. That's why you have cancer. You took it in. You asked for the cancer by eating food that has been, you were told that was good for you, but it was a lie. So cancer, AIDS, diabetes, we've cured them all thousands of times. We've had people on their deathbed, you know, when the doctors, I mean, it's pretty bad when doctors are like, we don't even want to give him chemotherapy. There's nothing we can do. That's when I come in. Or they call me. And I'm like, ha, here's a salad. You're fine. <laughs> and that's going to take the doctor away. You know, that's all you really need. And if you think, well, that sounds a little too easy, uh, it's very complicated. Nature is a very complicated thing. There's nothing easy about that. It is very complicated. You all want to be doctors right now? In, in like two minutes, you can be not only doctors, you can know more than any doctor out there. Any doctor out there, you guys will be better physicians than any doctor out there. Here you go. Here's how you cure anything. Anything. I don't care if it's depression, disease, whatever. Here's how you cure it. Okay? Uh, living foods, obviously. Yoga. Uh, what else? Come on. Anybody know? Fasting. Uh, well, fasting. There you go. And yoga and exercise. I think yoga should be implemented with another exercise routine. Definitely. But... We have uh, yoga, uh, living foods, fasting. That's a great cure for anything that ever happens wrong to you. If you die, the more the serious the de disease, the more serious and severe the fast. Okay. So even if it's a really serious disease, water. So <laughs> like green juice. If it's not so serious, you have a little fruit too. Um, so yoga, uh, fasting, living foods detoxification of the home. That means all of those toxic chemicals you're using in your home and all of those, uh, those like sprays and uh, soaps and spray, all that shh, America, shh, you know, no good. Detoxification of your home, okay? There's great alternatives. A little lemon juice and vinegar will clean anything. If you had some weird people over and you're kind of worried, throw a shot of vodka in there. <laughs> you know, what's not, what, what better cleanser is there? Vodka, lemon juice, and a little vinegar. You'll be like, whoa, that's some serious stuff. So, and the last thing, the last thing is, the most important thing to cure disease is to not eat it. <laughs> if you stop eating disease, guess what? 
You won't have it. But if you eat disease, guess what? You will. One plus one is two, okay? You must choose this road. Uh, my friend came to me and said, oh, I'm really sick. What do I do? I go, you know, raw foods and yoga. He goes, I know, I know. Well, what could I do today? I go, nothing. I mean, raw foods and yoga. He goes, I know, but today. And I go, dude, you're part of that world. So there's nothing you can do that's really going to help you. You can go take some antibiotics that won't work and poison you further. I don't know what to tell you. But, or you can just go raw and do a lot of yoga and do those five things and you will be fine. And you will just be fine. You won't get sick anymore. And when you do, you won't even know. You'll be like, oh, I guess I have a cold. Shoot, that's what I really like. I have a cold. Wow. Don't even know. So this is the way to really live your life, is to make sure you have an abundance of raw foods in your kitchen. Replace all, just don't throw away all that crap, you know, out of your kitchen. Get rid of it. I did the test yesterday. Who's addicted to blue and bleach? Who's addicted to blue and bleach? Come on. Blue and bleach, who's addicted to it? <coughs> no one eats pasta, bread, rice, and soy here? Nobody? Oh, good job, you guys. So who's addicted to blue and bleach? <coughs> Everybody. I know, it sucks. It's gunk, you guys. It's gunk in your guts, and it is not good. It is white. Remember, the white man is trying to bleach us from the inside to turn us all white. So from the inside out, they want to turn us white. So watch out, OK? All right, so we're going to make some food. I'm being Where's my sister? There she is. Right this way, young lady. <laughs> Get to work. Lady. Well, there we go. Alright. Yeah, that's a good one. Who's the big one? Okay. So the first thing we're gonna need is uh who mixed the cilantro or the parsley and the tomatoes together? I don't know, but I'd ask that. But whatever. <laughs> we need the biggest bowl you can find. That's it? Okay, then we need this bowl transferred into another bowl. Yeah. Uh, let's do this bowl. Maybe you can put this in here and then transfer this one. Yeah, and then, so I, I need this bowl for you. Thank you. No, don't mix anything until I go. You might have to find something else in the kitchen. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing when you would make a big raw dinner, because what you guys are going to do in order to get a raw food restaurant in Denver is to start having, that was a good smile, right on. Uh, to have dinners at home. Someone start having with a good home or a good location, start having dinners. Charge like 23, 24, 25, 30, 31, whatever, bucks, and have a great dinner. Light some beeswax candles, put some flowers, spend a little money, have a DJ, and have like 30 people over, 40 people over, charge them, and make those first people who come, charge them for, if you're good enough, say, hey, $10 for the raw class, and then you have to pay 30 for dinner, but, and then the we're going to make is the dinner in the class. See? Yeah. So that's all you have to do. And start having more and more and more raw dinners, and more and more people will come, and then pretty soon someone will sit down and go, wow, there's a lot of people that over to Resco, we'll make some money. So that's what needs to be done in order to get a raw restaurant in Denver. All right? So who's going to have dinner? Right on, right on. Good job, good job. Have dinner, you guys. In the best way. Honey is great. Non-filtered and raw, non-filtered and non-heated as possible. Not clover. Try a mountain shark. Um, you know, honey is great. Not clover. So it's part of that whole wheat and stuff. Um, but honey goes on gangrene and will cure it immediately. Leprosy, cure it immediately. Wounds and sores, cure it. Uh, great shampoo, no bubbles, but great shampoo. <laughs> great for the planet to digest. When you wash down the sink, what is the drain? The drain is your children's and grandchildren's. Okay, that's what the drain is. Remember that. So honey is great. So even those natural uh, soaps and stuff aren't too great to uh, wash down the drain. All right, so this is... No way. Oh, man. All right, well, someone mixed all the stuff together, but it's okay. <laughs> Who mixed the lime leaf and parsley? They're in trouble. All right, so this is what we need down here. We need, in this bowl, we are going to make glue and bleach, okay? So the way you make glue and bleach, I mean pasta, sorry. We're going to make pasta. Sorry. Pasta. Not glue, pasta. So the way you make pasta 
is you take some zucchini and on a little kitchen gizmo you slice it into a pasta. And zucchini works really good. And you know that pasta that's fresh out of the boiling water. How nice that stuff is. Man, who is the prep on this one? Okay, so alright, so the one is the lime leaf really in here too? Did anyone put lime leaf in there? Okay. It's okay. I don't see where, who is our lime leaf? Oh, there he is. Do you know where it's going to happen in the lime leaf? I don't see it. Is it in here? I believe so. Okay, it's cool. Yeah, she is, she knows. If she says it is, it is. So, totally good. Okay, so, this pasta. Thank you. A little oil. So a little salt, a little oil, and in five minutes, in five minutes, this will be a soft, gooey, doughy pasta. Like, look right now, like, look. Wait, sorry, not that piece. It's already started. Yeah, like straight. See? See, this will be like, okay? This is what we want. We want glue. We, I love dough. I love dough. <laughs> Who doesn't? Dough from junk food. Everybody says, so Giuliano, tell us, who inspired you? I'm like, mm, Taco Bell, McDonald's, uh, that's my friend, Kmart, they have the best tartar sauce and uh, nachos. Uh, they do. I love Kmart food, sorry. But uh, they can't eat it or you'll die. You know, I mean, why do I eat something and die? So, you can eat this food, and you won't die, and it tastes way better. So that's the deal. So, so remember, another thing, another good rule for our kitchen you'll see in San Francisco, in uh, LA, when we have a, when we're using metal, we use a plastic or a rubber scraper or a wood spoon. We never go metal against metal. Okay. Part of cooked food is that it's. The, part, the problem with cooked food, another of many others, is the metal contamination. You know how when you're old, you're senile and you got Alzheimer's? You know? What happened to getting wise? Uh, no one even knew. They're like, oh yeah, we did used to get wise. Oh, wow, I forgot. We started reading these magazines and the next thing you know, we carry a conversation on when we're 70 and everybody's proud of us. You know, because we can actually still talk. So, uh, no good, you guys. Get wise and agile when you're old. That's how old, that's what old age should be. Extreme agility and intelligence. That's what old age is. I bet if you look it up in the dictionary, it says that. Um, it says wiseness. So will you just kind of toss this a little? Thank you. So try not to use paper towels. Try and use chef's rags. They're much more effective than paper towels. It's much better for the plant. Oh, thank you, chef rags. If you fold it nicely, look. You can make a big mess on this side, and then you just go, bing. <laughs> if you fold it right, you can get 20 uses out of this. Okay, 20 like bad sides. You can still have it on the counter. You go, wow. Because remember, when you're having those dinners, you have to make everything look good. You know, Everything has to look very amazing. So look at this pasta. It's already turning into like a beautiful, a little more up. Yes, <coughs> yes boss. No problem. There you go. So, uh, so we're definitely going to make some pasta. I mean, it's great. They told me like 250 people in the show, but I'm like, oh man, we're never going to make this much food for everybody. But today we can, because there's not that many people here. So that's actually a good thing. Um, so, this is a Vitamix. It's just almond. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But this is a Vitamix. It's a great blender. Great blender. Um, Vitamix. Food Cuisinart, or food processor, whatever you want to call it. Food processor. A dehydrator and a Green Star juicer. Okay? Excalibur Nine Tray Dehydrator, Green Star juicer, Vitamix, food processor. If you spend $1,200, you will never have to go to the doctor and dentist again. Ever. It's a pretty good deal. 1200 bucks. If you don't need health insurance, health insurance, are you crazy? No way. No health insurance. None of that. 
If you get sick, you go to the farm, a pharmacist, the farm. And if you get injured, you go to the yoga teacher. If you get really injured, you go to the masseuse. If you get super injured, you go to the only facet of the medical world, which is any, which is great, actually. The trauma unit. Okay. The trauma unit is actually smart doctors. Any other doctor, I mean, arrest them. Crimes against humanity. I'm serious. Like, leave the scene. Please run. 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 Oh, get they're ready. Okay. So we have our boss up. And look at, no, we don't really need those. So look at our pasta now, look at this. In just five minutes, look at that. It's just pasta, look at that laziness. Look, each noodle will be noodly. I always tell people, remember, without problems in your life, which are actually not problems, they are challenges. Without challenges in your life, you are a pasta noodle. I mean, if you have challenges, you're like, you know. Use the mandolin. Yeah, we use the mandolin. I suggest buying one of those metal $175 expensive mandolins off my website if you want. Uh, <laughs> because uh, it will never break ever in your whole life. Or you can buy the kitchen gizmo for 30 bucks and go through five of them every couple of years. You know, and throw away a lot of plastic and trash. So not recommended. Is there anything else in the kitchen? Okay. Alright, so where's our salt again? There it is. So we have some bread that we brought from uh, LA. So, uh, we bought some uh, bread which we made from LA because bread is great. There's all kinds of bread. There's flat bread, puppy breads. You can have tons of bread. We made bread before ovens, you guys. I think ovens are only like 100 years old, aren't they? <laughs> or like two or 300. I mean, I don't know, but they're not very old. I mean, we used to make bread before ovens, okay? Everybody's like, really? You eat only raw food? I mean, wow. I'm like, everything eats raw food since the beginning of time, even humans. It's not that of much of a wow. You're the weird one, you eat cooked food. So, so you know. Okay, so we brought some of this, we're gonna put some salt on here, some of that terrible nice salt. But it's sea salt, it's from Frontier, Frontier School. Okay. What kind of bread is this? Yeah, what is the bread? Oh, the bread. Oh, that's the stuff that you're calling bread. Great. The bread is in the, um, is in the, uh, the bread is in the uh, the bread is in the uh, recipe book. It's just uh, the buckwheat bread. The buckwheat sprouted bread. Buckwheat sprouted buckwheat gross. Thank you. I'll take over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, sprouted buckwheat gross, and they're just amazing things. They are the sprouted buckwheat. Just is like one of the best things to use as like the flat, crusty bread. And, you know, it's too much, the buckwheat, if you use a piece here and a piece here for sandwiches. You know what I found out? If you use a piece of flax and buckwheat, then you're talking because you got a sandwich and it's not too much buckwheat because the buckwheat is pretty dominant. Um, and this piece is a little more um, So uh, a piece of flax and a piece of buckwheat together are actually great. They're just terrific, you know. So, this looks like a great pasta already. And, uh, oh, this is amazing. Okay. So, what else are we going to do with our pasta? So, we have some mango and some ginger. Okay. So, I think we're going to definitely have a salad. And remember how I said I didn't need plates? Where is it? Okay, they're not here right now. <laughs> so, I need plates. So, and you guys, I'm, I'm going to ask a favor, if everyone, so we don't have a bunch of forks and spoons trash, we even have non-toxic soap in this kitchen. I don't think the library will mind if everyone is in this kitchen and just quickly washes their hands. Um, I think it's a better idea, okay? I think it's a better idea than using a bunch of, and you can just eat your salad. Just use these two fingers. Don't go, you know, then of course you're like, what the heck? <laughs> just use these two fingers and just eat. 
So, um, a little I'll show you. A little lemon juice. Yeah, you can just go ahead. On a lot of recipes, you guys, you'd be surprised, especially when I'm making soap, which I make a lot. How do you make soap? Uh, coconut butter, rosemary, lemons, vodka. Uh, <laughs> what else? Uh, flour petals, um, what else? Salt, salt is good soap. Tea tree oil, lavender oil. That goes. You make the best soaps, and then you can go like this. Mmm, this soap is great. You can be like, hey, I think we're gonna have soup now. So, so, all right. So, uh, so you make soap. I mean, you make soap. You just drop the whole lemon in here, skin, peel, seeds, and all. And even when I make a lot of recipes, ask her how many recipes I make. The whole lemon, the whole thing. Who thinks juice is good for them? Wrong, it is not. It doesn't exist in nature. Supplements, no good, doesn't exist in nature. Tinctures, nope, sorry, doesn't exist in nature. Raw living food, yep, cool. So, the reason we don't use, so the reason we don't use, uh, we don't use juice, and we do drink orange juice every day twice, two 
gigantic classes twice a day usually, is because that's just pleasure. Okay? That's not because I'm thinking it's good for me. But I did hear this guy say, I'm gonna go on a juice diet. And I'm like, okay, this is the deal, dude. Uh, I mean a juice fast, sorry. He's gonna drink this juice that doesn't even taste good, that he thinks is terrible, when it's not even that great for him. The best juice is made in the Vitamix. Just put everything you're gonna put, the whole here, you know, everything in the Vitamix, and <coughs> juice it in the Vitamix, I mean blend it in the Vitamix, and just drink it like that. And it doesn't have to be so bad. Did you know if you put a couple scoops of fresh raw salsa in the Vitamix, it'll taste amazing. It'll taste amazing. And remember, there are no accidents. Uh, this kid over here, what's your name? Andre. What is it? Andre. Oh, Andre. Uh, yeah, not you. Sorry, Eagle. Next time. <laughs> but Andre. Uh, Eagle's a cool guy. Are you raw, Eagle? Are you raw? Eagle? Thanks for being on. <laughs> Go say hi to the dog. <laughs> say hi to the dog. Uh, that's my line for people. They're like, what kind of food? Is that? food? No thanks. I'm like, say hi to the doctor. Hi. <laughs> They're like, what? And, uh, okay, so um, this kid over here mixed all the lime leaf and all the parsley and tomatoes, and that was actually not what I wanted done at all. But watch, I bet it comes out amazing. We'll be like, wow, we came up with a whole new recipe. <laughs> it's like, thanks. So you don't get any commission. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, don't worry. Really, the only thing, we'll talk food for a little while now. The only things, hey, you kids, what are you doing here? <laughs> you, what are you guys doing? <laughs> so, the only things you can do that make food taste bad is put too much salt, too much heat, or too much lemon sometimes can kind of ruin a dish sometimes. It'd be too lemony. Like, ooh, that's lime. Um, that can actually ruin a dish. Or, it doesn't really ruin a dish, but it just kind of, doesn't make it like, bam, wow, oof, whoa, is not enough salt. And you know, too little of those things, too little spice, too little lemon juice, too little salt. So if you can just get that right, you guys, it'll be fine. Like if I was gonna make this big thing, if I put this much garlic in it, and I put like this much, say this is garlic, and I put like this much garlic in it, that might not be enough, but I know it's the right amount. Like it's not garlic pasta, it's just pasta. A little garlic, sure, boom. Not a ton, not too little. Like if you put this, no one's gonna taste it. But you kind of start getting to know the idea. Like I have this much food, I need about this much stuff to impact it. You know, you kind of get it. So you don't even really have to measure this. Cause you know, after a while, if you start sitting there with a measuring cup, you're like, you know, I hate raw food. <laughs> so order a pizza. Okay, so let's, uh, I had a bad dream last night. I dreamed that we actually just ordered a bunch of people pizza and said, hey, it's all raw. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, we made it. Those aren't really eggs and pepperoni. Those are some tomatoes. I swear. <laughs> and we were like, oh, it tastes so real. It's even hot. <laughs> well, that's just habanero. We dehydrated it. Um, I swear, I, I, I think I had that dream. I don't know why. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, I would never really do that, no way. Um, but one time, I must tell the truth, I never admitted this, I had to put Hershey syrup in something. I had this investor night dinner, and it was terrible, and there was Hershey syrup sitting right here, and the chocolate turned out, I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, like <laughs> but they were cooked fooders, they didn't care, they ate everything, you know, like, whatever. I would never do that to raw food. You know, the people I knew that wanted to go raw. Uh, those people, whatever. Okay, so we're gonna put some ginger in here. Um, remember, you don't have to kill the ginger even. You don't have to kill the basil. You don't have to kill the dill. You can pull the dill leaf off the tree and the tree is still alive. You can pick the apple, the apple is still alive. The ginger root, you cut off a piece of this and there's still a big root system going on. The animal must die to eat a piece of it. You might, if you take it away, you can't just say, hey, just put your arm, it's cool. You know, it doesn't work like that. You, know, you can't just pick an arm or a leg. You have to kill the animal. That animal is dead, this is alive. This can give birth, the dead flesh will only spoil and rot. This is alive and has immune system. 
This has an active functioning immune system right now. I mean, this is beautiful. This is an immune system that you can eat, okay? So dead food, cooked food is just dead. Just what it is. Dead food. No oxygen, no life force present, no immune system present, no water present, metal contamination, no enzymes, no nutrients or minerals cooked out into the air. That's that smell. Um, the, uh, what else? Uh, there's one more. What's that? No chlorophyll. No chlorophyll left in it, cooked, killed, um, the enzymes, those, and metal contamination. So, a bunch of reasons to never eat cooked food. Thank you for the garlic. Right on time, Thank you. So, a little ginger, a little garlic, okay. A little soy sauce again. Remember, this is the edge. This is where your salt and heat should be. Unless people really hate it. And I know there's a couple yogis here who said, hey, I don't eat garlic and ginger. I mean, garlic and ginger is mushroom. I know, but this recipe must have garlic. This one. Just this one. Don't worry, we'll take this. So, you must be on the edge with salt and spice. Ooh, it's too, oh, it's perfect. Or it's too spicy, it's perfect. You know, but not like, where's the spice, where's the salt? Okay, let's put a little salt on here. Put a little salt on here. Did we already put salt on here? Oh, well. No, actually, I'm kidding, because uh, these dishes are very, um, are, are great with a lot of salt on them. So I'm going to make one onion and one knot. Okay. So uh, let's do this one on. Okay, so we're going to just do this. It uh, looks good. We're going to put a touch of oil. So what we are going to do here, is, can you only get one oil? No, that's true. Great. <coughs> Will someone go grab the other oil? And open it, please. Thank you. So, uh, okay. let's see. We are going to make ginger garlic cream dressing. The reason I like this dressing so much is it's thick and creamy, and there's no nuts or avocado. It's just a emulsified oil. Like, we're actually going to pour this whole bottle of oil in here. Mm -hmm. So, um, it just turns into cream with oil. Thanks, Eva. Okay. And you can see how we're going to do this. We're going to emulsify the oil, which means we're going to start it slow with a little oil, get the cream of the garlic and ginger going, and then mix the oil into that and build up a cream. It's kind of like making mayonnaise. And uh, remember mayonnaise, main ingredient is eggs, and what are eggs? Unborn chickens. Right. Chicken periods. Disease chicken periods. We call them disease menstruations. <laughs> And then we call bacon, fried, dead, diseased, pig ass. That's for breakfast. Chicken, diseased, period, menstruation, I don't know what they are. Sorry, some girl goes to me, they're not period, but menstruation, they are. And I go, okay, amniotic fluid. Not much better for breakfast, okay? So don't put this in your system. I mean, you guys, like, I mean, whoa. Okay, so uh, if this dressing breaks and it doesn't emulsify and it just turns out really oily, what you do is you start all over again because it will break. A really easy way to have it not break is put the oil in like a bowl like this and then put it in the freezer for an hour or two. And then it get chunky and really chunky and then it won't uh, freeze too easy. Another way of getting it to not break, because it can break kind of delicately, it's kind of delicate to break. Um, you can put a little nuts in there, just a few little touch of nuts, just like a little tiny handful just to get it going. Another way is if it does break, um, pour it out in a container, start all over again, and use that broken dressing as the oil. Okay? Just pretend it's the bottle of oil this time. And just make it all over, and you'll have a ton of dressing. But guess what? This dressing lasts forever. The seed cheeses we are going to make today, most of them, especially when they have sunflower seed or pumpkin, last forever. Forever, you guys. They get better and better. So, okay, here we go. First up. So, we'll start on slow. Have a problem. You need this stuff. I know what I'm doing over here. <laughs> You're a professional. <laughs> I am a professional. 
Who else has a who else is a professional career here? Who else? Go on. What do you do professionally? Massage. You? Stone Mason. Stone Mason? You're a professional? Are you a professional? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Eagle? Yeah, I'm a professional grainette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, grainy professional like grainy nuts, okay? All doctors are in the medical practice, just so you know. Okay. So um, <laughs> They're not professionals. They are practicing. They even admit it. <laughs> they're like, oh, well, you're just so that makes you an experiment. Okay. And don't they pay you? But no, you pay them. Okay. So try this again. Vitamix like this. Although Vitamix didn't like it on their instructional video when I did it. <laughs> I'm serious, you can. It really works. It kind of it just catches it and turns it over and then catches it again and then turns it over. Whereas it's so the Vitamix is so strong it just kind of fluffs everything up and then it just whips nothing, you know. So alright. So and we have a perfect cream with no that with no uh, nuts. It's just ginger and garlic. And you put, this is the interesting part, here you go, the finale of this one. You put so much ginger and garlic in it that you would usually would be like, whoa, ugh, you know, if you ate it, but they cancel each other out. They actually cancel each other out. So you can have ginger, gar you saw I put like this much ginger and garlic in here, and it doesn't taste, it actually tastes a little lemony and oily, and that's it. There's no taste of ginger and garlic, maybe a touch of garlic, but definitely no ginger and definitely not spicy at all. It cancels each other out. Isn't that great? Okay, so, you have anything more? Okay. Do you have a cutting board out here? Okay, great. You can always slice through some of this. Out. <laughs> Great. Did you put salt in that? Yeah, put, no, I put number show you. Not sure. Yeah, I put number show you. So it is a little salty. Um, okay, we'll pass this one out. <coughs> so if you don't have enough of these, don't worry, you guys, because you're going to make your own bread. Or, this is a bad time to leave, you guys. <laughs> Or the food. All right, I never saw that before. They must not know me. I have to hurry. Okay, hurry, hurry. Okay, so we're on time here. Okay, next act is in soon. Um, so this is the deal, uh, you guys, with uh, the bread. You can order bread from my website, or you can make it yourself. Okay. So what are the other? They're gonna look for. Um, so we're, we got our salad. Okay, so no one likes to buy too much fruit because fruit spoils and it's not ripe and then it goes bad. And uh, I think we could do a, uh, okay, whatever. Um, so fruit, people don't like to eat it because it spoils. Freeze it for smoothies tomorrow, okay? What else can you do with herbs? Put it in your salad. You don't like to buy herbs. I bought all this bitter meat and it went bad and it was $5 and you know. Put it in your salads. Everything else that you make, say we make this pasta and you just can't eat anymore, what can you do with it? 
put it in the food processor, mix it with some flax seeds, and bake some bread. That night you have Thai pasta flavored bread the next day. Isn't that great? You don't have to throw away anything. You put it in the food processor, put it with some flax seeds or some sprouted buckwheat, even better, and boom, put it in the dehydrator. And you have bread the next day, amazing breads. So there's no reason to throw away anything in the diet. So uh, now in our Thai pasta, we're going to definitely put some uh, mint and some cilantro. So all that cilantro we did, oh, there's another one. <laughs> See, that's all we went on, one bowl. That was terrible. No, we found it. And some basil. And our parsley, lime leaf, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> the new recipe. The new recipe, yeah, thank you. The new recipe. Sorry, Mother Nature, but it's okay. Um, we're going to put a little extra soy. Uh, where's that little bag of curry? This is heat. Does anybody have a problem with hot food here? Good. Okay, we'll save it for, you know what, we'll just put it on the side. So I did hear a... Yes. All right, well, we'll put the gray when we find it. <laughs> we'll uh, put some chopped almonds in there, um, a little chopped onions. <coughs> so what I do is I bake all the food usually, and then whatever's left, I just throw it in the salad. <laughs> <laughs> then, then it's salad, you know, because I know our salad will be good. So a little more cilantro. Um, the lemongrass, there you go, that's what I'm thinking. Lemongrass, we have a lemongrass pasta today, you guys. With some bell pepper, it makes it beautiful. Uh, little lemon, you know, we had a big tray of limes in there. It's in there, I'll bring it. Okay. So we're going to marinate these mushrooms too. So we're going to take the mushrooms back and actually run it at them. So when you take the pots back there, can you find a volunteer that will cut these mushrooms? If anybody feels like cutting really quick some mushrooms, just that many, not a ton. And uh, we got to marinate those little soy sauce. Uh, mushrooms, I marinate, and now I'll show you. If you marinate, if you put those mushrooms, thank you, Bridget. If you, uh, here's a knife, my new. Oh, okay, there's a couple. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, let's put some onions on this, hold on. Uh, without onions, yeah, I'll put them on only half. Thanks for watching. Why did my sprouted buckwheat bread ferment? Why did the sprouted, good question. Why? Uh, when did it ferment? In the dehydrator? Yeah. It fermented in the dehydrator? Okay, maybe you sprouted it for a little too long. Remember, just soak it for eight hours, okay? Drain it, and then sprout it for about a day. That's it. Even if they're growing the whole thing, they should be starting to. Make sure you do. And you know another thing? Are you sure it was sproutable buckwheat? There's been some buckwheat going out around that won't sprout. Okay, well then, did it long tail? Yeah, no, they should be like, I mean like, yeah. Yeah, so tiny a tail, like a millimeter or two or three, you know, like tiny. Okay, so definitely some curry and lime juice. No, don't use that. Uh, we put some curry. The, we put some uh, lime leaf. Yeah, if you want this recipe, you can go in my book under Passion Soup. It's the same ingredients in Passion Soup, but instead of making a big liquid coconut milk soup, we made pasta. All right, that's it. So, so 
Uh, it should, but it's not gonna. No. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. It, but you know, you guys work with what you got. If you have coke now, don't care. It'll still be better than anything else you're gonna get. A little honey. All good chefs use salt in desserts and sugar in the uh, entrees. Okay, all good chefs. They know the secret that. Uh, let me bring. Let's put one. Okay, we'll put a little hit of oil. Oil's good everywhere. You know? A little oil, whatever. Um, chopped almond. What else do we want to put in here? I think we're cool. Are you using olive oil? Of course. I'm Sicilian, baby. Yeah, olive oil. And uh, this is a special key mix that we make. It's just jalapeno. If you see me put that in, that's what that is. We'll put a little more of this stuff in here. I think we should just put all of them, right? Yeah. It has the lime leaf in it, you need it. Like the lime leaf is the most important part of this recipe in my opinion. Well, we're we'll off here somewhere. You ground it up? Uh, we, you have to chop lime leaf and lemongrass by hand. No machine does it. You must chop it by hand. You can blend it in the blender, but you must chop it by hand. Uh, yeah, the whole food habit. The lime leaf. The lime leaf. Can you believe it? This is a really easy to marinate. You just put a little amount of sugar on them, and in look, one minute you have marinated sauteed shiitake. Isn't that great? Or as I call it, tofu. Oh. Or chicken. There you go, chicken. Where's the oyster mushroom? That was in my bowl. There's a bowl on the top shelf, and there's a little thing around it that has oyster mushrooms in it. From the up up shop. Okay, hold on here. Hold on. Why no mushrooms in the yogi? Just because they know about breath doesn't mean they know everything. <laughs> I'm serious. The yogis don't know. I can understand the garlic and onions. You want the garlic and onions? They make you. And uh, they do. They make you too. Like you say, like, hey, I'm going to get some. So you get too excited. I'm serious. That's what garlic and onions do to you. But the mushrooms, mushrooms are magic. They're from another planet. They are totally good for you. There's no reason to not eat mushrooms. The yogis, I think they're just going a little too far. And most of those yogis, they forget the whole asana, which is the poses, and they just start meditating too much, and then they can't even touch their toes. So, I'm like, you invented yoga, you can't even touch your toes? Okay, so these are oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are really cool. You want to know why? Because look what you can do with oyster mushrooms. Shredded chicken. Look, shredded chicken, turkey. Look at that. Isn't that great? I mean, you guys, nothing's missing. You saute this, you're just happy. You're like, there's even shredded chicken in my food. Wow, it's raw. It's like amazing. I get shredded chicken. <laughs> like, shredded chicken is back in your life. Chocolate is back in your life. Cacao, great stuff. Totally right back at you. Um, Coffee, chicory, David Wolf has a good coffee replacement recipe. Um, there's coffee, there's everything. This is the diet everyone is looking for and doesn't realize exists, okay? That's what this is, this raw food. It's the diet everyone is looking for. When are you going to get your own cooking tool? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking food at work right now. I was really busy before, but now I'm like ready and they've been asking me for a while, so I... Finally, they offered me a cook. What was the question? Uh, when am I going to have my own cooking show? Uh, pretty soon now, yeah. They uh, they just made me an offer, I guess, you know, the rent is due again, I guess, so yes, this time. <laughs> like, uh, um, a seed cheese here. What do you think about cashews? About cashews? Uh, David Wolf, I think it's some raw ones, but I wouldn't use any of the... Uh, cooked ones. I mean, most cashews are cooked, so I would not use them. Uh, the raw ones are great. Why not? We can put the rest of this cilantro in here. I'm so happy. Is there no lime leaves? There are lime leaves there anymore? Or anything? I'm ready for whatever we have. <laughs> yeah, I can use it. Trust me. Like, I don't know. I don't think. I mean, now I know. I need them. Um, 
Okay, uh, question, yes? Uh, they don't wax organic peppers and stuff. Oh, really? They shouldn't. They, you should not you buy them. Just don't buy them. Because there's no way to get the wax off. So, uh, I guess we have our pasta going. I have to taste this and make sure it's amazing and perfect. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it is. Um, you know what you're doing? I have a question. Yes, please. On, on a diet emphasized portion control and that kind of stuff, it doesn't seem like you're very concerned with that. Yeah, I mean, raw food, your body will talk to you and say, hey, it's enough. All um, people who are overweight are actually starving. They eat a bunch of food that is empty calorie, um, empty nutrition, sorry, empty nutrition, empty food. So they just are a half hour later, they want to eat some more because they're like, I'm not nutritionized. And a half hour, I want to eat some more. And so overweight people are actually starving. Isn't that amazing? So, yes, sir. Uh, you were talking earlier about not taking any. Yeah, no way. What's the deal with B12? B12, go to a remote location, dig a hole in a nice forest, dig a hole six inches down, and have a couple scoops of earth every year. That is a great source of B12. Eat earth. Yeah, well, people eat dead rotting corpses all day. Eat a little earth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or seaweed, bee pollen, spirulina, if you can't stomach fear, seaweed, bee pollen, spirulina, all great B12 sources. Yeah, don't worry about the B12. It's not that, okay? If you have a B12 deficiency, you will feel it before you ever have a problem with B12. You will feel it in your teeth. Your teeth will feel like they're going to crumble, okay? And your gums will hurt a lot. So if you have a B12 deficiency, it will show first in your teeth before it ever affects you really seriously. So just, you know, then go get some of that. If you don't feel that, then you don't even have to do any of that. Then you're probably getting enough. Correction. It was perfect. How do you feel about frozen things like that? Um, totally fine. I love ice cream. Mm -hmm. I eat it every day almost. I try. <laughs> Every day. Ice cream. Right. Um, it's just good ice cream, not poison ice cream. Um, yeah, uh, freezing takes 50% of the enzymes away. Although, who cares? Uh, dehydrating takes 50% of the enzymes away. Again, who cares? What are you going to do? Not to eat dehydrated food. But sunbaking adds 50% of the enzymes, increases enzymes by 50%. So. You're at 150% food, then it's out of Palm Springs. That bread that you ate was baked in the sun on a rock in Palm Springs. Okay. Um, okay, so pasta's done. Let's get, where's our other big bowl that we have? Nothing is funner than watching all of your friends get old and sick, and while you get healthier and feel better, you're like, hey, I told you, right on, see ya. You know? Nothing is funner. Okay, that's a funnier joke you do. So, uh, so uh, that is a good thing to do. It's very fun to do that. And uh, all you have to do is just remember that, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's like a way to stay out of that whole deal, and that's what you want to do. That's basically I mean, I don't know if they stayed. I hope they did. So thanks. Thank you very much. Just help yourself on the salad, you guys.
Oh,